for the kind introduction and good afternoon for those people in London and good evening for those people in Asia and good morning for the people in the United States. So today's topic actually is more like a technology type of thing to drive the discovery of the novel mutation expressions and fusion genes. And you know, it's uh, I changed the title slightly. It basically it says ultra low error synthetic long reach sequencing to uncover the evolution of mutation in human cancers. Now, <clears throat> human cancer is one of the most lethal diseases for human being. I Means uh, in the USA in 2021, there's uh, almost two million new cases of cancers and over 600,000 people actually die from cancer. And the top four case, top four cancer actually is a lung, colorectal cancer, breast cancer, and prostate cancer. And worldwide, actually, just over 10 million people actually in 2019 die from cancers. And basically one in six deaths is due to cancer. So it's the order of the cancer Related deaths actually a little bit reverse. I mean, so lung is still the same, and then colorectal is the same, and then liver go move up to you know the top, top three, and stomach and breast cancers which is follow. And the story actually started like a couple of years ago, and when we try to find out how we identify the mutation expression and isoform expression in the malignant tissues, and in doing so, we developed a technology with uh, loop genomics, and basically we basically we produce a so-called barcode enzyme complex, which attached to the three prime end of the mRNA, and after the cDNA synthesis, and then what we do actually is try to intramolecular cisgendered barcoding inside the cDNA strands. So this each of these barcoding is identical. So as far as you find the barcoding, we know that come from the same molecules. So this is a intermolecular single mo single molecular basically molecular index. And we just, after this fragmentation, we do it something. We do a, a sequencing and do it the normal uh, assembly using the so-called a, a space program, so software program. Okay. And then it will generate it's all called a synthetic long with cDNA sequencing. So <clears throat> the look at the potential utility of these techniques, we will first we will we'll characterize it, <laughs> whether they actually how how far the width. So this is actually using the ERCC, which is a, a control RNA for the basically a we have, we have known underlying tools. So we want to is able to width a lot, very long, yeah, you go to basically 80% of the ERCC, we could find that actually is actually, uh, you know, with all from end to end, basically from the transcription size and those, and then also go to transcription termination size. So basically 80%, you know, 65, 80%. And quantif quantification wise, we will see, you know, sort of more with correlation with the tools. Then expected count, which is based on the, uh, the underlying tools, and then in comparison, which uh, actually we found. So it's it's not it's not it's not a great line, but it's a reasonable, you know, acceptable line. Basically, it's uh, the R is around 0 0.91, 0 0.92. <clears throat> in terms of error rate, it's actually interesting when we look at the in at the error rates. It's ex the indels. And the deletions and the substitutions, they actually looks very similar to the Illumina sort of sequencing. So it says that the technique works. The next thing we do is can we compare with existing techniques in the market like the PET BIOS, the Oxford Nanopore, ONT, on 2D sequencing, and Illumina RNC. So basically, look at here for the currently. For the, for, for the, this is actually all published uh, uh, reports, okay? This is a result not done by us, actually done by other people and they publish it. The error rate for also Nanopore is huge, actually, it's 13% error rate. 
for the the pet bottles LA is approximately 1.7 percent, but if we go to the loop seek RNA sequencing, it's 0.08 percent, and Illumina short read is 0.5 percent. So it basically we are almost two magnitude of more accurate than the uh, the next Oxford nanopores and about tenfold more accurate than the pet bio as a result. So in this case, it will be quite reliable to identify the expression mutations. The next thing we we'll do actually, well, we try to you know, try to look at the utility of these techniques and we try three just basically three cases. Those are all colon cancer. Basically look at look at the B90 cells. Look at the cancer and the metastatic lymph node cancer. I mean, metastatic lymph node lesions. So three of them. We just simply group these three three patients together and then into a normal group, and then the tumor groups as well as the metastatic lymph node groups. And then first in aspirin, we found out whether the isoform gene expression is better than the gene uh, isoform expression analysis better than the gene expression itself. So this is the first going to try to answer. So in this case, we first to segregate those samples, normal tumors, and then look for the differential gene expression. We found actually 2,682 genes. And for the isoform, we found more. Actually, we found 7,006 isoforms that are basically differential expressed. So then we have two we have two variables here. Means one is isoform, one is the uh, genes. Then we overlap them to see how many these isoform are unique, or how many how many isoform actually is overlap with the gene expression differentiate, differentiation uh, differential expression. You see, for those good one, which is a let me take a look here. Yep. Group one is those one that has differential gene expression has no changes in isolation distribution. And group two actually here, which is about 2,329, which it has the differential gene expression also accompanied with isoform uh, changes, uh, distribution changes. And the last group is actually the gene expression changes have no, no changes, but the isoform distribution changes basically has a silent switch of the isoform expression. So in this case, we want to see first thing we look into for the gene expression that has no change in isoform distributions. Okay, basically you find a gene there and then change the differential expression, but isoform basically stay the same in terms of, well, you see that if we do a hierarchical cluster, you know, uh, the uh, analysis, you can see from here, the, and you see the uh, the the uh, basically you see that the normal is it, it basically it clustered together by themselves, but however they also cluster with a tumor sample right there. It's a, for this small number of sample, this is not really not good. And as a result, that's actually this is less ideal situation. As when and then we do a so-called principal component analysis, as you can see from here. And the tumor samples is very scattering. The distance of the, of the tumor sample and then and particularly this one with the normal samples actually <laughs> they're very close. I mean so basically this distance between these ones is, is longer than this one. So that's really a cluster with the normal sample instead of cluster with the uh, uh, tumor samples for this guy. The same thing with the Pearson Pearson correlation analysis. So in, in as a result, we concluded that the differential expression of genes alone are insufficient to segregate normal sample colon cancer and metastatic colon cancers. And then the next step, how about that we only choose those gene expression that also accompany with the isoform distribution. And then actually much better, you can see that the T the, plus the primary cancer sample cluster together 
and the multi-stack sample also cluster together, and the normal sample is clustered together. So if you look at the distance, they are really segregated, reasonable. Well, means are normal, there is still a little wide variation here, but the but the uh, multi sample indeed all sit by themselves, and the tumor sample is very far apart. So, the, and similar with the Pearson uh, co uh, coefficient correlation, and then basically we concluded that the differential gene expression with iPhone switchings will reasonably be segregated normal colon from normal cancers, from, from whole colon cancers and metastatic colon cancer, but not between the metastatic and primary colon cancer, because this one here with this one is still sort of close to each other. Look, 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 look at you here. The distance from here to here, distance from here, is basically equivalent. And so basically they're not extremely good in terms of the uh, segregation. And then the next thing we'll we see, we'll find out what if we change a little bit, like look at those ISO expression, which is produce a switch but actually there are no gene expression changes, the so-called silent switch, okay? And interestingly, they actually produce the best result. As you can see that the normal cluster with normal metastasis, you know, cluster with metastasis and primary cancer, cluster with primary cancer, you can see the distance. These three groups, they're all, all suddenly, they're all together. Basically, they are, are in the net. They are basically, statistically, they are, the same group, you could easily identify them without any kind of stretches. And so it's the same for the Pearson correlations. So it appeared that the silent switch, the ISIS form switch probably is a driving uh, classifier for cancer as well as the metastasis developments. So based, based on this, we concluded that the silent ISIS form switch alone produces a robust segregation of normal colon cancers and metastatic cancer samples. So quite contrary to what the, the contemporary thinking, the gene expression is the most dominant, most important thing to classify cancers. No, it is an ice worm that, that is the best based on this analysis. Now, if you look into those, those, uh, you know, those genes and things that, if, now one of those is some of the example here, these are post prostaglandin, prostaglandin E synthase, okay, three. And in the expression, gene expression level, if everything comes together, they are very similar. These are the basic normal samples like this. And within the standard deviation of the, the so in the, of the cancer samples. But however, for, th for this particular isomer, XM0067, one nine one nine nine point two. Actually, you see actually the normal is significantly downregulated in comparison with the tumor samples. And this is the uh, roughly one, which is is uh, PD PD three P binding protein is which is responsible for the uh, trafficking for the uh, I mean the endos endosome, and it's essential for a variety of the physiological activities. And again, you see they basically. If you look at the gene level, they are almost identical, basically, they neck to neck. But if you look at this particular isoform, no, they are quite different. It means that they're not even close. And then the XR2452772.3. And for the tRNA, uh, uh, <clears throat> tRNA uh, methyl transfer 6, which is a very important protein to maintain the stability of tRNA. Actually, if you look at in the total RNA level, they're basically very much an identical. But when you go to the uh, <laughs> the isoform level, no, they are quite different. Means they are tremendously different. Means basically wall part of it. So, and this, this is one which is actually is, is the hippo signal, I uh, mean nuclear effectors, and which play a variety, play a very important role in variety of uh, human cancers. You see, in the I mean, so superficially in the gene expression, they are basically we see the standard variation of, no, of normal and the gene I mean, the tumors, whatever, 
And then, however, we go to when you go to the uh, isoforms, we see no, they some isoforms is quite dramatically. And interesting now, CD44 is one of the important uh, means of uh, oncology in in, uh, in liver cancer and colon cancer or whatever. And actually, this particular gene has 26 isoforms. So when you say, okay, you have up regulation or down regulation CD44, you don't know. It means uh, like you know, in prostate cancer, also probably one of the important. And you can see that, however, if you look in isoform situation, even though they are similar in, ter in terms of total gene expression level, but however, in the metastatic sample, you see that this one show up, but not in that absent in a normal sample completely. So this one is here, this one, and then this one. Oh, not here anymore. So basically, it is subtle changes because each of these isoforms actually produce different proteins, slightly different. Look here, the, the amino acids are different in a way that that means it is certain, once you have amino acid here, that means the protein structure are different. As a result, that subtle difference drives the cancer. That's, that's probably potentially is the argument. Now for this, uh, ATPA1, which is ATPA is basically is essential for you know maintaining homeostasis of cells. And normal normal as uh, samples that one end and three n it can produce only three isoforms. But however, in the tumor sample and the sample, it produces you no know, additional isoform, which is completely absent in the normal individual or normal normal tissues. So but however, you look into the uh, the general expression of the gene, well, they're the same, basically, no difference. I mean, the normal and, and metastatic sample and tumor samples, they, they, they really, you couldn't tell a difference right there. And beta catenin is, which is a tumor, on, I mean, it's a, basically, is a, a oncogene for liver cancer and has, has 11, actually, 11 of the isoforms there. Each isoform actually produces slightly different, you know, slightly different of amino acid. You see, actually, the normal sample from the colon, uh, from the, from this in, with this, this three individual actually, they are expressed quite different kind of isoform distribution composition. And this one, I mean, so you can see that this one, the this isoform is completely absent in the normal, but this is this actually produces a significant different. Uh, structural proteins, some down, some up, obviously, all over the places. So, as a result, it is I mean, gene expression itself may not really tell the whole story. It's too general. I mean, so you need to go to highly specific things. So, in summary, Differential isoform, but not the gene expression, differential primary and metastatic cancers. First take home message. The second take home message, isoform diversity switching is greater in tumor in comparison to normal tissues. And the gene expression study are blind to silent switching in which isoform expression alter without the altering the gene expression because it's just silent switching. So the same question is, how, what about the uh, single nucleotide means the mutation and those things? Okay. Then we look into the total, the so called SMB in the single nucleotide variants. We found 30,000, actually quite a bit. And then uh, the total contains SMB containing isoform, also 61,000, you know, 300. This is <laughs> that's, uh, quite a bit there. And then the, the second thing we want to see, because the, this mutation only happens in uh, in cancer and metastatic sample, but not in the normal individual. So we want to look for, can we look into those variants that could tell which is normal, uh, which is a tumor primary cancer, which is metastatic sample, sample which, is, which belong to metastatic samples. T means the tumors and M means the metastatic samples. So if we have more of those, uh, Means that differential express more in the metastatic samples. We have seventeen genes, and for those uh, more expressed in the primary sample, but less expressed in the 
in the uh, mass cell sample that's 35. So based on this about 52 of the uh, isoform, we could do a cost analysis. We could basically completely segregated. And you can see that all the, the mother cell sample, they're all in the one end of the pole and the tumor sample is the other end of the just basically no no need to even pay attention to whether there's a line on the draw or no. They basically pose apart the walls apart they're in, in a different wall. Different. So just that's a basic question. Maybe the mutation expression itself is is the best way to segregate or characterize a, a malignant samples. So then we look in the one one of those things, okay, this is a B, uh, B rob you know, B600 E mutation, which is common in colorectal cancers. And you look into this interesting map, the, the mother cell sample in the wild type ideal expression is only one isoform, okay. But in the mother cell sample, the, the mutant allele, it, it produces a couple of different isoforms. There are three additional new one, And so it's what and uh, and of for the two primary cancer samples you, you from here, the primary cancers have two times one expression, but but the mutant allele produces additional three different of uh, you know uh, 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 isoform there. So basically, in conclusion, the V sixteen mutation is most expressed via NM one three five four six zero nine. Uh, and XM 01701255 and the cell XR 01744857 and the, the, that, that's the main thing. I mean, so, however, this one is yes, 004333 actually is primarily expressed in the so called normal allele. Now, another example. You see that mutant allele expression actually is different from the uh, wild type allele is the, the RAS, which is opposite. You see, for the wild type allele in the uh, in the, in the primary cancer sample, and you have two isoforms. One is the uh, NM 4985 uh, and the other one is uh, 33360. But in the Newton, there were only one, one isoform, which is somewhat opposite than the PRR mutation. And however, the for the mutant for the uh, example, the wild type has three, and then this one also will be three also, but however the, the composition looks like a little different. So the G12 V mutation on the right isoform structure in cancer cell basically somewhat a different route than the K RAS. So this is not it's not entirely, you know, uh, uh, entirely that uh, uh, one go basically as gene specific, not not like a universal type of things. And so basically, based on the conclusions, is the the SNP are found in specific form, but not others. And change of mutation other form may result in structural changes of mutant proteins. That's a basic take home message from that analysis. And in the second part of this talk, I will move you to a, a newer newer level of the uh, long resequencing. If we call a single cell, because we do not know based on this uh, bulk sequencing, and now we do not know how the cells can the cell behave if they have a, how did they express protein, how how the mutant allele express, how the evolution will occur, things like that. So from single cell level, we could tell. So we, develop, we modify the technique we developed previously. And basically, in this case, using a technical genomics, and then uh, hope this, this is actually, this process first goes through the single cell technical genomic uh, procedures, and then amplify a little bit, and using exome molecule capture for gene-specific you know, analysis, basically, we use exome capture, in this case, about 20, 20,000 gene being analyzed. And then in this case, we hook up with a barcode. You look see barcode here at the end. And then after the, after the barcode being hooked up, and then we simply 
you know, basically uh, launch the uh, so-called intramolecular barcoding. So that basis this, this insertion amplifications and then basic and then after that fragmentation and sequence reassemble that back into a full length full length CDN sequence. So in this case we analyzed a pair of sample of uh, liver cancers and in this case we analyzed a 285 hepatocellular carcinoma cells and two, uh, 162 benign hepatocytes. And then we found that actually we had each cell will contain about 1,186 you know, genes, valid genes, and a little bit over um, uh, 1,300 of uh, isoforms per cells. Interestingly, we found a lot of those are normal isoforms in basic cells, basically found average of 442 to 450 novel isoforms in the cell. So, and then we do a mutation analysis based on this, we call the SNP in RNA found in, in exome, but not present in the gallbladder of the same individual in the exome, okay? In this case, it will rule out this, this, whatever I found, this SNP and SNP, is indeed a mutation because that SNP is not present in the genome of the gallbladder. So if we found total mutation is around you no know, little less than three thousand, and then we do a so-called knowledge independent classification of cells. So in this case, we basically found those you know, three thousands of uh, mutations, and then we look for those within a course of all which in the present in both benign and cancer cell that first thing that we eliminate them. So we require the standard deviation at least 0.4. In this case, we produce a somewhat segregation of normal means the benign liver cells and the uh, and the cancer uh, cancer cells in the gene level, but not good. You can see that basically it's contiguous. And then next thing we want to see, okay, we do instead of go for the gene level, go for isoform level. What happened? So if we go for isoform level, you see a three clusters of the cells. One cluster is primarily all actually all of them are cancer cells. The other one is a mixture of cancer cells and the uh, you know normal normal benign. I'm not so sure because call no normal because benign liver cells. Okay, and, and then we okay we just label these cells at the top is called cluster A and on the left is cluster B and on the right is cluster C. And then look for the gene mutations and see the all overlap, okay? We found the isoform mutation, actually, you see, look at this overlap like this way. As a result, we found that there are 288 genes that uh, that's one that are unique to cluster C, and then uh, 1,523 actually unique to cluster A, and then there's 40, 442 unique to cluster B. So we use this unique uh, isoform expression, unique mutation isoform expression, to redo the cluster again. We produce a, such a thing, you see, the system dramatically increase between them. It's, but there is a four little cluster there, one, two, and three, four. You just just look by eye. And then next thing we say, okay, we require this cluster isoform mutation must be at least present in more than five cells. We get only 113 mutation isoforms. As a result, we have eight clusters here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And among this actually, uh, Six of them actually are uniquely cancer, and then only one or two of them actually is a mixture of cancer and 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 the normal individuals. So the next thing we do actually, oh, why why do you label it? Label this as A cluster with different you no, know, just give you a name. Label it A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, so basically a different one. And then to look for what is different in terms of what is the expression of mutation isoform in these groups. You can see from here actually, and this this group, for example, is really rich in rich in the mutation that 
HLA actually, we found in the gene is actually dominated by the uh, HLA mutation. Uh, fascinating. And actually, this dom is this uh, most of this is HLA uh, uh, HLA DQB1 mutation. And then here is uh, HLA B and HLA C, and this is the uh, HLA as a DRB1. So basically, and this is. You no, know, a mixture of this variety of other genes like um, you no, know, uh, like uh, ribopotin, ribosomal proteins, and some of those are like mug A and variety of things, which, which is kind of somewhat sporadic, in sort of highly clustered concentrated. So the key feature actually, this is looks like HLA mutation is the major classifier of this cancer cell versus the normal, and if we, it, it, this is another one, which is also cancer, but however, this, this is not as much as, as this one. So, the next thing we look into it is that, okay, what is the mutation in HLA? You see, each of these, each of these is A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, okay? The dominated is possible HLA mutation, which is, you see, basically from a is 54, 35, basically almost 100% are positive for the mutations, except the age group, which is variety. And so it indicates that the HLA mutation maybe is the dominant factors for the uh, mutation evolutions. The next step to look into it is how could you tell that it means uh, basically we talk about interesting. This we found that actually one of these examples is HLA DQB1. Okay, this is the HLA DQB1 only express one isoform, which is NM002123. No other form. Basically, this is in cell diversity, the cancer cell only express one type of isoform. This is one one potent, in other words, as a as a result. Okay, and then. The maximum mutation number in this uh, HIA DQB1 is 25, 25 mutation, but there is a variety of changes. And then you can see that uh, this is this is A, B, C, D, E, F, G, actually is the, is the cluster group from the previous slides. And this is B9 and uh, HCC sample, you can see that they are all concentrated in the, in the, in the, in the uh, cancer group. As you can see from here, you know, we 0 to 3, 0 to 3, 0 to 25, basically, we know that everything is normal, except that when you go to cancer, and then they, they have a lot of them, actually, they mostly express a variety of those mutations, and each school has a different type mutation. Then the question, you have some variety of mutations, how does this mutation evolve? You wonder, this mutation could not happen overnight. It must be starting from isolated mutation, for example, so from somewhere. Well, we found it. You see, starting from one, one is from this, from actually from this N C terminus of the protein. You see here, and then expand to one to three, one to four, one to five, and then bang, you all the way to uh two to five, two to thirteen, and then basically expand to uh, uh one to thirteen, one to fifteen, and then one to sixteen, basically. Bouncing around like this, basically step by step evolution all the way into a biggest ball, actually, which is has 25 uh, mutations right there. Now, there are also other parts of it too, actually, which is coming from this end. And you can see from basically from, from the end terminus on this case, and then go all the way to all the way to here in this way. This is another pathway. So basically, then. It indicates that the mutation evolution is not random. They are following from the, basically the expansion is from a certain spot and then expand from there gradually expanding contiguously as a result. So this is an interesting part because each step gain of, of mutation produces a newer evolution of the of the HRA mutation molecule and then maybe produce a resistance to the cancer, uh, immune surveillance, and therefore produce an evasion as a result. Now this is HLAB, it's a little different. 
he's somewhat like he's he's starting from instead of starting from the end terminus, the uh, C terminus, the uh, end term, I mean the C terminus, starting from end terminus from here, basically, from from the uh, from the position eleven, which is is uh, if uh, A fifteen G, and you can see from there is expansion from here, and then go to from here to A to uh, A to eleven, and then six, then A to eleven, go to two, and then go to all the way here, and some of them actually go this way, and then go this way, and eventually go to this huge number of cells. Now this is red number, these cell numbers so you see from here. This actually is the the peak of the mutation. Means that 149 cells actually contain the same mutation as a result. And there's another evolution path for HRAC molecules, as you can see, that it is actually this is a little more random this time, actually, is somewhat like starting from the middle and then go to this one. Second, two mutations actually is the peak already. And then there's a go to, and this is three mutations, is, is what. Number five nine and five nine fourteen mutation actually is is the most dominant mutation found in this uh, you know uh, in this uh, uh, mutation pathway. And DRB one is a little simpler, only five mutations. And the, the mutation number one, which is in the N terminus, uh, C terminus, has not much. Okay, didn't evolve, but however, the mutation two, three, four, five actually all evolved into a four mutation clusters right there. And you can see, so based on this, we concluded that the, the, the evo basically the evolution probably would not stop here because it would not like to stop in, in the five mutations before it evolved more. So this probably is the uh, major reason why the cancer ca could keep evading the, the immune surveillance system because this LA keep evolving as a result of the hypermutation cluster. Now, one interesting thing about this uh, analysis, you found that, okay, did you find any other non-immunological genes mutation expression? Yeah, we found a lot of them. Interesting, now, for this uh, DOC-A, which is, is a uh, so-called guanine uh, nucleotide exchange factor, it extends for a variety of those uh, cell proliferation and cancer-related process. And it's a now this one has we found actually six novel different different type of novel uh, uh, isoform there, and we actually we found we did, interestingly we found all those uh, expressed transcript has the mutation. There are no known isoform with wild type expression. So actually, as a result, you can see that. These all had mutation. There means the A twenty two V P ninety seventy and D sixty three. Only the wild type C actually is in a normal guy novel, the physical novel to wild type is expressed in the in benign hepatocytes, and as well this guy has a benign hepatocyte. There are no, in other words, there are no known normal wild type isoform being found. It means that it looks like it's the mutation that promotes the expression of dog eight. Without the mutation, it didn't express well <laughs> for some reason. And so the steep, the uh, so-called the steep P four actor is allo reductase, uh, met met metal allo reductase, and it is important to reduce the, the ferrous or reduce the copper into a more reduced form less basically less radical. And actually it's, it, it's an important suppressor, tumor suppressor for several different cancers like breast, gliomas, and uh, liver cancers. And this one is an entirely different story. You can see from here, <laughs> the wild tie, one cell express, you can see from here, express the wild tie as well as the mutant allele in the same isoform. And then this one also, Express the, uh, the same cell also express three different type of isoform right there. So not like this one. If we only use usually it express one type isoform, but this one is multiple isoform. You can see from there, and both is not limited. There are no bias towards the, the mutants or wild type. They're basically about even. So different gene have a different 
regulation mechanism in terms of splicings and dispersions. Obviously, this is really a interesting thing to, to further to do further analysis. And also, we found a lot of fusion genes based on this in the long sequencing. Some of them are here like EML4, which is is a uh, binding proteins. We can actually translocate it. We com we combine with the uh, ACTR2, which is a a, a so-called actin related protein, which is a nuclear binding. You know, is right related to ATPase and energy things like that. The recombination basically take away the, the microtubule binding domains and left, what lower left is actually is somewhat like a, a, a little leader sequence from the ACTR2. Basically, I think the, it's more like a decoy protein for the uh, uh, EML4. So actually the function will be completely lost. And CC, DC127 is a so-called a coil coil containing domain proteins. And CD, uh, PDCD6 actually is a program, cell death protein, kind of interesting name. But after the, the recombination, the cell death domain is gone. Only left is, well, whatever left is, is calcium binding domain with the coil coil domain there. So obviously, it produces huge structural changes for both CD, uh, PDCD6 and CCDC127. And another example here, actually PLG, which is plasminogen, and you see the recombination with the uh, uh, fibrinogen gamma, it basically produced a truncated PLG, basically plas plasminogen, which lost the regulation domain, therefore make the plasminogen point consistently activated. As a result, maybe that's actually promote, help to promote the signaling pathway of the social goals. Or liver cancer. So the next question we ask is that, well, if we are talk about the uh, the uh, standard means a means a, in terms of gene expression means a, can we use the regular way to uh, means to to classify the cancer cells based on gene expression? Yes, actually we could do that. I mean so. When we the gene expression has standard deviation more than 0.5, and then you produce a little bit of segregation of these two groups, and then you have 0.8, and then you have more, and then one, you have a little bit even better distance to separate in between them. And 1.4, you see the very book excellence of segregation between groups. And in this group has mostly a uh, cancer cell, the other one is mostly is the uh, normal hepatocytes with some of the mixture of the uh, cell from the cancer samples. And so similarly, the isoform also doing the same job. I mean, basically you see the 0.5, you can see some segregations, and then you have 0.8, and then you have better segregation, and then one has better, and then uh, 1.4, and basically it's something suggesting that both isoform and gene expression differentiation is existing in the benign and the hepatocellular carcinoma samples. So then the question is, so which one is playing the vital role, isoform or the genes? Okay, we just do the same thing again. Use the differential expression gene overlap with differential isoform, okay? You can see that the diff when the SD is more than 0.5, okay? And then you have two, uh, 273, uh, uh, you have uh, 273 uniquely uh, gene expression. But we have 775 overlap between the uh, isoform and the, uh, and the gene. So basically, okay, we use the unique gene to do a clustering versus the isoform and gene overlap to the clustering. You see that obviously the gene only didn't do a very good job, okay? It means that you can see that basically they are all mixture. And if we look for the gene isoform, you automatically separate very well. And then the next thing, okay, go to 0.8, you can see from here. And you, you, you can see that basically you can see these, you no. Know, this is gene only, 
and overlap. And if you okay, you because you have two hundred seventy five uh, isoform versus six fifty nine, it's not fair. And then why don't you downsize it? Yeah, we do. It means we downsize it to make this sample and isoform only fifty nine random samples three times. Actually, each time produce better result than this. And in it, so it is a, it's not the variable difference makes the segregation. Is the character of the variable that makes the difference. In other words, so same thing for these. Uh, you know, for variable, I mean, SD one, and you see not very good. And then this one is not good either. This is uh, one uh, genes one one eighty two, and then uh, and then uh, there's a gene. Uh, it's the 1.4, and you can see from here, actually, it's, you see that not very good, gene only 5, and then this is overlap, it's 22, it's so no good. So it means that the gene only is not very good, but the overlap all produce a very good result, as, 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 as the uh, analysis show. So the next thing I, I look into is that, uh, well, can we combine the gene expression, the mutation expressions, and uh, and uh, you no know, fusion gene to do a clustering. Yes, we did. And as a result, you can see from here, if we combine all three, actually, it produces the best clustering. This is basically only basically the only five normal cells is clustered with the with, uh, from the benign sample cluster with the cancer samples. Actually, we look into this five cancer cells cluster with the cancer samples. They, they actually they all contain mutations and you no know, fusion gene over there. So actually, all that five so-called hepatocytes, they are actually cancer cells embedded in a normal sample as a result. Now this is a red cancer means cancer cells in embedded into the my co migrate with the normal side. That's actually those are endothelial cells and those are you know, cupola cells. So, so actually those are supposedly there. So based on this, we have fairly clear clear cut classification just based on the gene expression, mutation expression, and fusion gene expressions. No need of knowledge. It means that you do not you should never require the knowledge. This is normal. This is sample to fit into the classification. It itself you speak it means that basically the result is speak for itself. So based on this is a mega summary, and then the pro capture coupled with synthetic long wave sequencing with high accuracy provides an important tool and give a new level of granularity to analyze mutation isoform and gene expression regulation and single molecule mutation evolution may occur through a specific pathways and mutation isoform expression and gene fusion improve gene expression and base classification of our uh, uh, HCC cells. So at the end, I'd like to thank the, uh, the uh, uh, collaboration with Twist Bioscience and Element Bioscience Incorporated. They actually provide uh, the important technologies. And this is supported by National Cancer Institute, NIDDKs, and and uh, also the University of Pittsburgh, which are not listed here, uh, uh, Scientific uh, Translation of Science uh, Center. And as well, I will stop here and take some questions.